Hey everyone, my name is Lehua and welcome to the Superfina channel. I am a variety content creator, meaning I like a variety of things and I like to talk about them. Today we are going to talk about a game, actually two games. We are going to talk about La Mulana 1 and 2. Yes, 1 and 2. These games are actually games that I requested to review from NIS America. So shout out to them for letting me to review these games. Pound it. Pound it. La Mulana is a side-scrolling action-adventure puzzle platformer with Metroidvania elements such as interconnecting maps and item collecting. There's a lot of items to collect. A lot. A lot. There's a lot. And yo, it gets so addicting. This is actually a difficult game. Literally. This is a difficult game. There is a guide which is accessible on NIS's America's website. There's a guide and it says that this is a difficult game. Now I saw this and I was like, how difficult can this be? Like, how difficult? Or like, really? Really? Bruh. This was hard. This was bullshit. And I'm going to explain why. Like, oh my God. Hold up, hold up, hold up. I have to collect myself because I am remembering all the bullshit I went through. Like, ooh. Fuck. Okay, hold up, hold up. Let me, let me collect myself. <sighs> okay. Let's start with the story first, okay? So, one, La Mulana 1 is about Lameza Kosugi. He is an archaeologist and he ventures into the ruins of La Mulana. He ventures into La Mulana ruins seeking the secret treasure of life. Now, La Mulana is filled, consists different fields, fields, fields. They're called fields according to the guide. And each field has a bunch of rooms. And then, and then there are guardians. So in the fields slash rooms, there are monsters that we have to fight against. And then there are guardians we have to defeat. Now these guardians are the bosses. And yes, there are mini bosses before them. Now the bullshit part is we cannot replenish our health unless we collect souls. Yeah, souls. There's no items that lets us replenish our health. So, yeah, let, let me tell you. Let me tell you. Okay, so we got our health. Yeah, 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 yeah. We have our health. And um, it depletes, right? As we get damage. Right? Right. It depletes. And the only way we can replenish it is if we... Fill up a so meter. Now, a so meter is going to be like right below our health meter. So, the so meter is right below it. And we collect these green orbs that are dropped from the enemies that we eliminate. So, not all of our enemies release these souls. These green orbs, cute green orbs. Yeah, they're cute. Not all of them release these green orbs so we are supposed to collect these green orbs fill up this so meter here and once we fill it up then it replenishes our health our health now fortunately there are saving points throughout the ruin these saving points are actually kind of like monuments they look like tablets. So at these monuments, we can save there. And before that, before that, we need to acquire some software. Now, this is a cool thing about this game. It's sort of modern. Our archaeologist, Lameza, he has a laptop. And 
throughout the game, we are able to collect these softwares that enable us to read tablets, glyphs, decipher them. And by doing this, we can get hints. Hints will help us solve the puzzles within the ruins. Now remember, this is a puzzle platformer. Okay, this is a puzzle platformer. Meaning, the whole fucking area is a puzzle. We have to solve puzzles everywhere. Okay? Everywhere. Every room is a puzzle. There's a riddle in every turn we think. Challenging. It is challenging. Anyways, I'm going off topic. So back to the saving points. So we encounter these saving points, these monuments. We are able to save there after we read them, indicating that it is a saving point. We have to press up. Yes, we have to press up to save. So we press up, directional button, up to save. And then, then after we find the map of that field, then we can register that that was a saving point that we can fast travel to. But, but before we can do fast traveling, we need to acquire the Holy Grail. It is literally the Holy Grail. Think fabulously, holy, whatever, that we can fast travel. Fast travel is amazing. Why? Because there's so many fields. La Mulana is filled with so many areas. It's, it's a godsend. It's a universe sin. Whatever you want to call it. Fast traveling is amazing. And you want to find this holy grail as fast as possible. Now remember I said you can only fast travel after you find the map. Yes, I found this out as I was playing because I would find all the saving points. Like that was my goal. My goal was to find the saving points so I can be like, yeah, I can fast travel there. And then I would try to fast. I would I would try to fast travel. And then my options to fast travel to a saving point weren't all there. I was like, what the fuck? What the fuck? I was like, excuse you, where's my saving point? I know I found one. And it turned out we can only fast travel to saving points after we find the map. After we find the map. So, in order to fast travel, we have to find that saving point and the map. And before all that, find the Holy Grail. The Holy Grail will be found in the beginning of the game, so no biggie for that. No biggie. I talked about a laptop that Lamelza has, yeah? So this laptop, we acquire software throughout the game. Software is found in shops, and some of these shops are obvious. We can find them. Yeah, yeah. And some are hidden. Yes, some are hidden. Hidden. Ooh. <sighs> we can find software, and these software will help us decipher certain tablets, certain glyphs, certain items. And we want to be able to decipher them because they give us hints to clues that is within that room. And in order for us to solve the puzzle in that room, it enables us to find a passageway, another entrance to another room. And we want to find another room because we want to find more stuff, like treasure. We want to find more treasure. Why? Because there are items in the treasure. Why? Because this is a metroidvania. We want to collect items. These items help us progress in the game. Now, I must remind people, once you find the software, please, Please download them. You have to go to the menu and then go to the software tab. And then you have to download the software. There's going to be a software bar. And as soon as you click on the software, the bar gets filled up from that software. If you don't do this, you can't use that software. Meaning, say you find the software and you're like, oh, yay, cool. I acquired it. And then you go to this tablet you try to decipher it 
it's showing gibberish characters and you're like the fuck and it turns out you didn't go to menu you didn't go to the software tab you didn't download the software that's why you couldn't decipher that tablet mm-hmm details details you must pay attention to the details after we solve the puzzle of the room and we gain entrance to another room or we are able to access dais now a dais is going to be like this little platform thing and we have weights we buy these weights from shops and we put the weight on the dais and the dais goes like Choo. and that activates it it will reveal either a passageway a chest or a trap yes these dices after we put a weight on them can activate fucking traps oh my gosh there are so many traps throughout these ruins there's a lot but that's what makes this game challenging that's what makes this game difficult <laughs> <laughs> it was difficult. <sighs> so, there are dices all over the ruins. We have these weights. We put the weights on these dices, and they can either reveal passageways, treasure, or fucking traps. Yeah. And that is part of the puzzles because. Sometimes we can't even access the dais because there's something blocking it. And we have to solve how to access that dais so we can, you know, put a weight on it. And when we see those diases, and we know we can access them, and we know the room has a puzzle, we're like, okay, how do I solve this puzzle? You look at everything. You, lack, you look at all the hints. You're like, okay, all right. I see. I see a pattern there. Is this pattern related to these stones over here? Is it? And so you have to test it out. You know, sometimes the room has this eyeball inside of it. Like somewhere in the room, there's like an eyeball. And you better be careful of that freaking eyeball because. If you accidentally hit a artifact which involves the puzzles of the room. Yes, these artifacts are related to the puzzles in the room. If you accidentally hit the wrong artifact, the freaking eyeball shoots a lightning bolt at your character, at La Meza, your archaeologist. And boy, does it cause a lot of damage. <gasps> Lemeza died a lot for me hitting those artifacts. Died a lot. That was bullshit. Yeah, a lot of that was bullshit in my opinion. In, in my opinion, that was a lot of bullshit. Let me give an example. When I say accidentally hit it, I was in an area. Okay, it was icy. Lemez was slipping around and had these freaking cotton ball monsters kind of like floating towards me. And let me tell you, these monsters can cause damage just by grazing you, just by grazing you, touching you. They don't even have to attack. All they have to do is touch you and they cause damage. Bullshit. Okay, that's bullshit. So I'm trying to like fight these fuzzy cotton ball monsters with my whip. And my whip, you know, you know how like whips are like like that? So Lameza, he like he throws his arm back, right? He throws his arm back, you know, kind of like a baseball player to like swing. 
Well, Le Mans is whipping. So apparently, there was a artifact behind Le Mans. So I'm trying to like whip away this cotton ball fuzzy monster. And apparently, when Le Mans threw his whip back, it touched the artifact when I was trying to like whip away the cotton ball monster. And because it touched the artifact, it activated the freaking eyeball to shoot the lightning ball at me, Lameza. And you know what? I died. And I had to go all the way back to the saving point. To the saving point. <laughs> I did so much exploring. <laughs> and I have to do it all over again. Boom. Shit. But because I knew where to go, because I knew what to do, because I knew what to avoid, I was okay. You know, I was like, you know what? You know what? I'm just taking longer to reach my goal. That's fine. That's totally fine because you, I know what to do now. And the reason why I was so okay with it was because that area that I died in, there was a passageway, a door. All I wanted to do was go to that door. So I knew what to do. I knew to, you know, whip away that cotton ball monster and to not hit that artifact. Yeah. So I was talking about a weapon, right? I was talking about a whip. That is our main weapon. Now we have a main weapon and we have a sub weapon. Our main weapon so far is a whip and a knife and as far as i got into the game the next weapon that i wanted to get was an axe and we do have sub weapons so these sub weapons can be a shuriken it could be a spear it could be a pistol it's actually up to the choice of the player and what they actually find for me i just got up to the shurikens and the pistol. I didn't get anything beyond that because I was so focused on the main weapons. And the reason why I was concentrating on the main weapons is because I encountered one of the guardians, Bahamut. Bahamut is a large fish, a dragon-like fish, a fucking fish. I hate this fish. This fish took three hours of my life and i didn't even defeat it oh my gosh this i cried i kid you not i cried i cried out of frustration now let me tell you why so i had to find out figure out the pattern of Baham. i had to figure out the movements and where it's going and the other thing that was bullshit was there's a part where Bahamut jumps out of the water. So he jumps out of water. Okay, this is him. This is Bahamut. Fucking fish. And it creates like a little wave, a splash. And Lameza is on a boat. He's on a boat. And the splash makes the boat jump up. Yeah, yeah. So... When we jump up, Lameza is kind of like in line of its face. So he can take out his whip and like whack, whack that face to whack Bahamut's face, causing damage. Yeah. Now, the thing was, if I was too close, you know, jumping in front of Bahamut, if I just grazed Bahamut's face, it counted as causing damage towards me bullshit okay that counted as a damage towards me oh my gosh there were times where my health went down to three my health went down to three and i'm like oh i was praying that i would survive and defeat bahumut i didn't defeat him i died Oh shit. 
So there be times where I had to figure out the distance of the jumping. Now, if I was too far, I couldn't reach Bahamut's face to cause damage with my whip. And it turned out that I had to cause damage 20 times with that whip. I got up to 16 before I died. 16, that is 10 plus 6. 16. I had to hit it 20 times. It was so frustrating, so frustrating because Bahamut would do that jumpy move and then he would do like a splash in and out, in and out. And then he would shoot out freaking fireballs out of its mouth. And then if I hit it, it caused 19 damage, 19 damage. Now imagine, imagine that that's all I had left. 19, I was like, yeah, I'm good. I'm totally good. And then I hit a freaking fireball that's floating in the water. I hit it and I die. Bullshit! But I knew, I knew that I was supposed to be able to maneuver, to maneuver around those fireballs. So Bahamut would shoot the fireballs. Mm -hmm. Shoot the fireballs out. And then it would like float in the water. And all I had to do was like, you know, weave through. I could even jump over the fireballs. I could even jump over it. Now the thing is, what if I couldn't see where the next fireball was? And the area I landed after the jump was on a freaking fireball. Causing 19 damage and killing me. Okay? Killing me. So for three hours, I went through this. And finally, I got tired of it. And I looked up how to defeat Bahamut. I looked it up. Yes, I looked it up. And it said 20 hits with the whip and 8 hits with an axe. So I'm like... I can defeat this freaking fish with only eight hits if I have an axe. So I'm looking. I am looking for this axe. And apparently this axe was in a room. And this room was a backside of a room I've been in. So I have to look for the entrance to the backside. I'm like, the fuck is a backside? What the F is a backside? So I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, I'm looking, and finally I see like a little door that was hidden. And I get in there and I'm like, holy shit. It's a whole new field. I have to explore this area to look for this axe. Fudge. Fudge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I was having fun. I was having so much fun looking for these items. I'm like, okay. If I'm going to defeat this freaking fish, I need to go to this room and get this item. Okay. And it turns out that I have to do some, like, wall climbing. So I'm like, okay, how the frick do I climb the walls? And I'm like, you know, just exploring... They're like, la di da di da I might as well just look for treasure. That was like one of my gratifications in this, in this game. Was that I could at least find treasure. If I couldn't defeat that freaking fish, then I'm going to look for treasure. Mm-hmm. I'm going to get my rewards. I'll get you, fish. I will get you. So I'm looking for treasure. And then I'm exploring the area. I'm like, ooh, what's this spot? So I'm exploring, and I'm like, ooh, it looks like I can go down further without dying. Okay. And that's the thing. There's everywhere was explorable. You can drop down, land on the ground, and not die. It doesn't cause any damage. But if you land on spikes 
Then it does cause damage. Yeah, there's freaking spikes throughout this ruins. Shocker. Shocker. So I'm exploring, and then I find this treasure chest. I'm like, ooh. And then I see like a little bias like all the way over there. And I'm like, okay, I need to reach that bias over there. I know that is connected to that treasure chest. So I'm like hopping around, trying to avoid enemies, trying to like eradicate the enemies before they get me. And then I get to the bias. I put the weight on top of it. And then -da 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 -da, the treasure chest opens. I'm like, oh yeah, got the treasure chest. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Get to the treasure chest, and it reveals that it had a grapple claw. And apparently, the grapple claw enables us to hang on a wall. Mm hmm. And then we can, like, you know, jump walls side to side. Now, we are limited. Yeah, we are limited. We can only just grab that one spot. We can't just, like, jump, jump, jump up the wall or down the wall. No, no, we can't. We have to, like, jump and then, like, jump to the other side. And then, you know, zigzag down. We can't zigzag up. We can only zigzag down. Or, or we can grab onto the wall and then just drop and then whoop, grab onto the wall just in time. Timing. Timing was so important with that grapple claw. Oh my gosh, that's a whole nother thing. That's a whole nother thing. I already went off topic, okay? I already went off topic with Bahamut, that freaking fish. <sighs> Breathe. Breathe, Lehua. <sighs> okay, so like I said before, there's. Metrovania elements such as item collecting. There's a lot of items to collect. I pretty much mentioned a lot of items that we collect. And there's so much more. That's just like a fraction of what's really in the whole game. That's just a fraction. Just a fraction. Imagine what else there is. And even though this game is difficult, everything is attainable. Items are attainable, the passageways are, defeating the enemies, like, we know we can do it. It's just, how? How the F do we do it? And being patient, timing things just right, paying attention to pattern, paying attention to details in the area. Like I said before, the whole room can be a puzzle. And the clues are, like, right there. We just have to, like, look for it. We just have to, like, find it and recognize it. So that's La Mulana 1. Okay, that's just one. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, my goodness. Let's talk about La Mulana 2. Now, La Mulana 2 is about Nemeza's daughter, Lumisa. For some reason, Lameza is missing. So, Lumisa volunteers herself to venture into the ruins of La Mulana because apparently monsters are there and the locals are asking for help. Like, can you figure out where the monsters are coming from and just, you know, stop it because this is a touristy area. We need to make some money. So she goes, she ventures in, and it turns out the monsters were appearing from the back side of La Mulana. This is really interesting because remember when I said some of the fields had a backside secret rooms? So apparently the whole ruin of La Mulana had its own backside, had its own secret area, a whole new series of fields, rooms, all kinds of stuff. And then it's called Eglana. E-G-L-A-N-A. -A. Eglana. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So Lumisa ventures into Eglana. And we are experiencing the same bullshit. The same bullshit. The only difference is 
one. The mechanics of our character is a lot smoother. With La Mulana 1, it totally reminded me of a SNES game. La Mezzo is kind of rigid. You can only like go left, right, because you know, it's a side-scrolling game. And when we jumped, when we jumped, we can only like press up to jump higher. And if we wanted to go a direction, we had to like be, we had to be running and then jump. We couldn't just jump and then direction because if that happened, he would like jump and then meow. Pathetically, like that's it. That's that's as far as you can go. But if we just ran and then jumped, we can jump further. And with the Metrovania element of item collecting, later on we get some boots that let us run faster, which results us in jumping farther. Yeah, yeah, we can do that later on. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. It lets us find more stuff. It's like, oh my gosh, yes. It's like, yes! I can finally reach that spot that I couldn't jump to before because I couldn't jump far enough. <laughs> so with Misa, with her, you can jump and then do the direction and she can go pretty far. I, I was impressed. I was like, what? I was like, Lumisa, girl, you can jump far. And then when she did that running jump motion, oh, she can jump farther. So I was thinking, okay, if you can jump that far, how far can you jump with those boots? I know we're going to find those boots. I know. I'm looking for those boots right now. I'm working on La Mulana 2 right now. I'll keep you updated. Yeah, I'll keep you updated with the live stream. So if you want to see some gameplay, by the way, I did some live stream on La Mulana 1. You can see my frustration and how stubborn I was and how long I fought with Bahamut. Mm hmm. Three hours. Three freaking hours. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways, Lumisa, she is a lot more flexible and the graphics. You could tell that La Mulana 2 was an improvement of its predecessor. The colors, you could see different shades of colors. You could see shadows. You can even see details like shadings that made some depth. You could also see more details. For example, La Mulana 1. We had a bat. We could see we could see the shape of the bat. We knew it was a bat. It was kind of blurry, that pixelated look. But then in La Mulana 2, we could see the web of the wings, the ridges. I'm like, ooh, impressive. That is impressive. And the music. La Mulana 1, the music was kind of retro y, like it came from a synthesizer. With La Mulan 2, you could hear different instruments. You could hear the distinct sounds of the different instruments. It sounded more resounding. So yeah, there was a big difference between La Mulan 1 and 2. There was a difference in graphics and sound, but the gameplay was the same bullshit. Same in bullshit. And I'm so stubborn. I'm thinking, you know what? You are a game. You will not own me. I will own you. I will rule you. I will defeat you. And once I beat you, I'll be like, F you. F you. I rule you. I won. I defeated you. I'm the queen of the world. I'm super excited. I'm like, I know I'm going to get there. It's just when. When will I get there? I'll get there. Yeah, I'll get there. I'm going to freaking share it. Or share it on all social media platforms. Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, TikTok. All of them. I will relish in my victory. Even though this game is difficult, it's still fun. It's still addicting. It's still obsessive. I'm getting obsessed 
with this game because even though I keep dying, I know I can win and it's that whole hope. I got that hope that I'm going to win. And just knowing that I can, it just locks me down. Let me tell you guys, do not be fooled by the simple retro looking design. It's not simple. It is difficult. I highly recommend people to read the guide that is available on NIS America's website. If you go to NIS America's website for a La Mulana 1 and 2, there is going to be a link, a PDF download link to get the guide. The guide is about 33 pages and it is wonderful. It shows maps of each field, shows the rooms, shows the monsters in each field, and it shows the items, and even shows like combinations that will help increase your stats like defense, attacks, strength, and other stuff. I also made a written review. It's available on my website at lehuasuperfina.com. I'll leave a link in the description below and you can access it. You can read about it. It's a, pretty much the same as what I'm talking about. Maybe a little bit more detailed. Either or, read it, give it a like, leave a comment, leave a comment below. I do plan on live streaming, playing this game later on in the future. So if you want to catch that, don't forget to subscribe so you can be notified on the live stream. I'll leave links of past live streams of La Mulana in the description below. That way you can look at it and then, you know, see if it's worth watching. It's worth it. It is worth it. It's so worth it. You won't regret it. You will not regret it. Other than that, I hope you guys like this review, this super fina review of La Mulana 1 and 2. If you did, don't forget to give it a like. And if you want to see more reviews, if you have questions, subscribe and leave your questions, comments, opinions below in the comments. We also have a Discord. The Discord is available in the description. It's going to be a link. You can click on it and it'll lead you to the Superfina Discord. Over there, you can DM me. We can talk one-on-one or we can talk in a group. Most of the people in the Discord, we all hang out in my live stream. So we can like talk, watch the gameplay, play the gameplay, talk about it. And that's where I can also get support such as Super Chats, donations. We have awesome alerts alerts which are gifts that i made myself yeah i made myself you know it's unique i hope to see you guys there in the live streams don't forget to subscribe so you can be notified on the next video or live stream so i can see you there at the live stream yeah yeah hint, 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 hint. subscribe and again thank you so much for watching the super fina review of la Mulana one and two my name is lehua a variety content creator I will see you again later on. Nailed it! Hey, you are still watching this video. That means you liked it. So don't forget to give it a like. And while you're at it, subscribe, ring the bell so you don't miss future content. The Superfina channel also has a Patreon and channel membership. My Patreons, channel members, y'all are the bomb. Thank you for all your support. Here is a link to the Patreon if you want to support too and a list of social medias. All the links will be available in the description below. Thank you so much for watching this video. I have much love, much aloha for y'all and I will see you later.